The sixth lowest energy levels for hydrogen are showed here, and its ionization energy up at the top. The ionization energy is where n equals infinity, there's no energy, potential energy left here, and the electron escapes the atom. All of the energies are negative, which means you have a bound system. The electrons stay orbiting the nucleus. There are energies for higher values of n, but they're just too close together to draw. Can you see the relationship between energy and n? This is a great picture relating the physical orbitals of the electrons to their various energy levels. What's interesting is you have this n equal 1, this is your ground state down here with negative 13.60 electron volts, and we'll define that a little bit later. It's, it's a unit of energy. Then n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. As you go further away, the spacing between the energy levels gets greater. They become farther apart. However, the energy levels actually get closer together and you can see how they're related here with these little color-coded arrows. So the distance gets greater, the energy levels get closer together. When an electron drops to an energy level lower than it, for example, if you go from n equals 3 to n equals 2, what happens to the energy that is released? Conservation of energy requires that we think about it and figure out where it goes. If you're with a few other people, discuss it. If you're by yourself, Think about it for a second. Start with this case. We have an electron in the n equals 2 level, and it drops from this orbital to the n equals 1 orbital. Let's see what that looks like on the energy diagram. The energy level diagram, here's n equals 2 at an energy of negative 3.40 eV, and that drops down to the ground state of negative 13.60 eV. How much energy is released? Well, let's see. We start with our final energy, which is negative 13.6 eV. We subtract the initial. Most of physics, it's always final minus initial. And we get a change in energy of negative 10.2 electron volts. So the energy of the atom has dropped by 10.2 electron volts. Its potential energy has gone down. So that needs to be emitted so that the total energy of the system stays constant. It will be emitted as light. And here's a symbol for light being emitted at 10.2 eV. What does 10.2 eV of light look like? At around the same time that the Bohr model was being developed, Einstein and others developed a particle theory of light, which actually started way back with Isaac Newton. In Einstein's theory, light is emitted as a massless particle called a photon. Massless meaning it has no mass. The wavelength of a photon is given by this formula. Wavelength, which is lambda, is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by its energy. So here you go. Lambda is the wavelength of the light in meters. E is the energy in electron volts. H is Planck's constant. 4.14 times 10 to the minus 15th electron volt seconds, and C is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. The equation from the previous slide is illustrated in this chart. The chart shows the relationship between the wavelength, the color of light, and the energy of one photon of that light. So we have our wavelength on the top in nanometers. Nano is 10 to the minus 9. 700 nanometers, 780, and on the bottom it shows you the energy of each photon in electron volts. So if you have a wavelength of 600 nanometers, that photon has an energy of 2.1 electron volts. Here's a chart of the hydrogen energy levels. Start at the bottom, where you have n is equal to 1, the ground state, that's minus 13.6 eV electron volts. N equal 2 is all the way up here, and that's minus 3.40 electron volts. If an electron were to fall from the N equal 2 to the N equal 1 level, it would give off photons with an energy of 10.2 eV. That's just the difference between 3.4 and 13.60. The wavelength of those photons, here's our equation again, Planck's constant, speed of light, here's the energy, 
It's 1.2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, but a lot of times light wavelengths are given as nanometers. So you move the decimal over 2 to the right, and you get 120 times 10 to the minus 9th meters, or 120 nanometers. We have here the hydrogen spectrum again, and we showed that 120 nanometer line, right? That was from you go n equal 2 down to n equal 1. Here's 100 nanometers. Here's 1,000 nanometers. Here's 10,000 nanometers. Right over here, you have a line at 120 nanometers. That's explained by that energy level diagram from the previous slide. All the lines in the hydrogen spectra were explained by Bohr's model. Starting with the n equal 2 to n equal 1 transition, the 120 nanometer line, and all of these had the highest energy ultraviolet light emissions. The next highest energy transitions are to the n equal 2 level. So you can go from n equal 3 to n equal 2, n equal 4 to n equal 2, and so forth. And hopefully how you can see those are smaller energy transitions. The arrows are smaller, smaller changes in energy. They result in light photons in both the ultraviolet and the visible range being emitted. And finally, the lowest energy emitted light is in the infrared. And that is due to transitions to the n equal 3 level. So here's 4 to 3, 5 to 3, etc. And you can see how those are smaller energies. The arrows are smaller. An electron can take different routes back to its ground state. Here we show different paths. Okay, one path here, one path here. And we have an electron in the n equal 3 level, the blue level here. It can either go from 3 right down to 1, right here, or it can go from n equal 3 to n equal 2, and then n equal 2 to n equal 1. In one case, two lower energy photons are emitted, and in the other, one higher energy photon. Shown are two transitions on the atom diagram, one from n equal 6 to n equal 2, which we don't show because here we have n equal 4, n equal 6 would be off the page. But we do show 3 to 2. So that is this one right here, the red arrow, where you go from n equal 3 to n equal 2. And that's a red line. There it is in the spectra. Then we have 4 to 2, which is a higher energy transition. The arrow here is bigger. And that's a blue line. We color coded the arrows there. That's 486 nanometers. 2.6 electron volts. See how that's greater than 1.9? And then if we had 6 somewhere out here, okay, that would go from 6 down to 2, and that would be a purple line, and it's 410 nanometers, an energy of 3 electron volts. Of course, not all elements are as simple as hydrogen. They will have different numbers of protons in the nucleus and different numbers of electrons. So each atom will produce a unique emission spectrum after being energized, sort of a digital fingerprint. Since the emission spectrum of each one is unique, you can use it to identify the presence of a particular element. For example, if you see this, you have neon. If you see this, you have mercury. And if you see this spectrum, that's sodium. And actually, helium was not discovered on Earth first. It was discovered by looking at the emission spectra from the Sun. We've talked about energetic electrons coming from a higher energy level down to the ground state. Of course, it can go in the other direction. When exposed to white light, which has all the colors in it, the atoms will absorb bands of light equal to the difference in the energy levels. So different between these two levels, different between this, and this we're going to call the absorption spectra. The absorption spectra pattern is similar, the same, with the emission spectra. As predicted by the Bohr model, and verified in reality, electrons can only transition between orbits of set energies. Therefore, they must absorb energy at the exact same frequencies at which they emit the energy. We can use these spectra to identify elements or molecules. So here's the hydrogen absorption spectrum, 
Here's the emission spectrum. Note how the lines are in the same place, and really the only difference here is the background color.